everyone. This is Sebastian, one of your co-hosts. It's me. And I have Dirk just there in front of me on this little screen. Uh, big Dirk and little screen. How are you, Dirk, today for our latest episode of 2Debate.net? That was a very artful introduction, Sebastian. I'm I'm happy. I'm glad to see you. You've been on travel for how long? Three weeks? Two weeks? Actually, it feels like uh, every time we record, you've just been on traveling. You can just say three years. It's fine. It's just easier. Clean up. <laughs> At some when point, people ask me, where do you live? Sometimes when I want to be cheeky, I tell them I, I, I live in the clouds. All right, now now you're back and asking me how I feel. I'm I'm feeling jet lagged in replacement for you. So you you look totally energetic and I feel tired. So there's something wrong here. I think that you're trying to find excuses again and again, <laughs> always. Because today's yeah, motion yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that's be my a tough that's one, my general theme. Is the motion, if I'm not mistaken, leaving the EU, leaving the European Union needs to be painful. And by the flip of the coin, I will be defending that motion. That is, it is, it has to be painful. Whereas the coin has decided that you will be against that, that it has to be a breeze. It has to be done in friendly terms. Now, who's who's going to buy that? Yeah, it's like a like a breakup, you know? Right. We it's know like that breakups, a... they go down very well, easily. Yep. I can testify for that. Not not yeah. all, but some. You want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> the flip of the coin has decided that, Dirk, you will start to defend the fact that leaving the European Union does not need to be painful. You have two minutes. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. Uh, the common position is Brexit needs to be painful. They have to pay for leaving us alone. And uh, the reason for that, and every article writing about that cites that reason, uh, it needs to be a statement that others see and therefore think twice before following Brexit. So the more painful we make Brexit, the more likely it becomes that others stay in the European Union. And I think this is an argument that's plainly bonkers. I'm sorry. Um, I do the comparison. Let's, let's compare it with a marriage. Uh, people shouldn't stay together just because it's so expensive to get a divorce. People should stay together because they believe in their marriage, that it's more, uh, adding value to their life, that, because they are happy in that marriage. And same is true for unions like the European Union. And uh, it stands to say that uh, it's not even clear what the statement, it needs to be painful, means. The shared market... The free movement, the shared policies. What are we? What do we mean when we say uh, the leaving the EU needs to be painful? Because whatever we make painful out of these shared uh, shared values and shared resources will be painful for both parties, for us as well. So I argue it shouldn't be more painful than it already is because there is some pain involved. Uh, UK will, will lose access to, to certain markets. Uh, UK needs to renegotiate trade deals and all these things. So it will cost them dearly, but it doesn't need to be more painful than that because we, wanna, we don't want to lose uh, a, a valuable trade partner. We want to continue to have access to their market. We have people living in the UK, so we have a valuable interest in actually having a more or less fair, let's call it that way, divorce from Great Britain. And therefore, I'm against the motion. And now on to Sebastian. If you decide to leave a club, if you decide to leave my club, of course I'm going to be upset. Of course I'm going to make your life hell and miserable. There's no reason why I'm going to make your life easy. And it's not just any club. My club is the European Union. Woohoo! So leaving a union like the EU, that's not just like leaving any gentleman's club or sports club. Um, it's going to be inevitably messy. And you're saying that yourself, that uh, it is painful. And I'll get back in my second uh, period of time as to why we want to make it even more painful than it already is because of course we're thinking about the Brits and everyone loves the Brits don't we um, thirdly as you've mentioned it is important as a signal actually to other countries 
uh, whether they're members of the EU already or not, that joining the EU is a commitment. It's not just, oh, you know, one day I don't feel like it. Oh, I'm going to have a vote. And, well, you yeah, know, maybe I'm just going to leave. And uh, I'm going to conclude by saying one thing is that to the UK, because this is what we have in mind when we're talking about leaving the EU, the UK has signed um, the treaties, which imply that Article 50 uh, triggering, which means they know that it would be painful. There's nothing that is uh, that was uh, prepared and planned in the treaties to make it uh, non-painful. So they knew what they would be you know, getting out. Um, and in fact, in the case of the EUK, they've been pretty ungrateful. Uh, I'm not talking about the British people, but about the, the government, um, because for the past 40 years, they've had had a special treatment with a reduced budget contribution to the EU. So seriously, um, we're going to make it easy for them? No, I don't think so. You don't just leave my club and you know just leave and be happy and whatever. We'll talk about that another time. For now, we're going to make your life miserable. You want to leave us? We're going to make your life hell. This is a divorce and you've asked for it. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. So... Here's the thing, you don't even have an, uh, it's not even possible to make it extra painful. Honestly, the worst case scenario is they, they negotiate for two years and then all the contracts just end. And then UK has no contracts, no trading agreements with the EU and uh, has to renegotiate their agreements with other partners as well. And that's the worst case scenario. The other point is free market, free access to market. Well, they continue trade with us. In the end, there is money involved. They want to make money as much as we do. So we continue trading with each other. And uh, once they are out of the EU, well, they negotiate with us. So how to make that extra painful without hurting ourselves? Unclear to me. Why making it extra painful? Also unclear to me because they have a pretty sharp sword at their hand they can actually make life for us harder too we like to have access to the the whole um great britain market which is larger than just that single island in the north and uh, also we have people coming from europe that live and work in great britain we have an interest that england uh, or great britain leaves the eu at good terms because we don't want to have our own people hurt in the process so my point would be you don't even have much way to make it extra painful. The, the most painful we can do is making painful two years of negotiation and then all the contracts end uh, and they have re to renegotiate trade deals. We can make those trade deals painful, but then we basically pain ourselves. We can ask them to give some money back. Well, yeah. And what do we do if they don't do that? Are we then sending troops into Great Britain and <laughs> make it extra painful that way? I don't think so. Although... One, one thing has to be stated. This was the way 100 years ago. So until the EU came to pass, the Europeans were not really friendly with each other when they had hard negotiations. At some point, it always ended in a military struggle. And that's certainly a path that we don't want to go down on. So my core argument is, realistically, we cannot make it more painful than it already is. Every pain we inflict will be two-sided. It will, pay, it will be painful for us and painful for them. It's not even stopping anyone from leaving the EU as long as we have a clause for leaving the EU. And people should be in the EU because the advantages are weighting heavier than the disadvantages and because it's just very hard to untangle everything. Uh, that should be enough to keep them in. So we don't even need to state an example here. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear it. Yes, we can make it more painful to the Brits. They have their financial centers. Yes, it will hurt us too, the European Union, if we don't allow them to have access to euro-denominated uh, markets but it will hurt them more. And that's what's so pleasant about it. It will hurt them more. <laughs> so anyway, it will be painful regardless of bad intentions. It will be painful because there are just 60 million British people. There, there. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're only 60 million. We're 450 million Europeans. 
okay, we have Polish people. I'm half Polish, so that's okay. I can say that. But still, it's 450, you suckers. So don't have your unrealistic demands that you're having for the past year of trying to get access to everything without contributing back. I say that we have to do this. They're ungrateful. They're unrealistic in their demands. Let's make it painful. They will suffer. And then they will <laughs> beg on their knees to come back in the EU in 50 years' time. And you know what will happen then? Not- we will say no. We will say f- off. We don't want you back into the EU t- until you pay and you pay again. Thank you very much. We love you, British people. But you're no, part, you're no, longer, no longer part of the club. And I'm serious. I'm serious. You've upset me a lot because I love you. I've lived in London for three years and I miss it. And now you're making it difficult. So you're going to suffer. You will have to to bear with the pain. Thank you very much for listening. Leaving the EU needs to be painful. Now you understand why. Final statements. Dirk. Let's sum up the two arguments. So my argument was whatever we inflict on the Brits will hurt ourselves. And there is not any point in making it more painful than it already will be. And it will be very painful for them as it is. And it's not going to stand the test of keeping anyone else in the EU if we don't fix the EU um, for the for the problems it has. Your argument was make it hurt for them. They're leaving the suckers and we have to punish them, which, okay. Thank you for that argument. <laughs> so uh, for the sake of not hurting us ourselves more than uh, what it's worth, I still conclude I'm against the motion. Leaving the EU doesn't need to be painful. Well, it is painful, but it doesn't need to be more painful artificially so than it already is. Sebastian. The UK has wasted our time, and that's why it has to be more painful. It's not just leaving any club. They knew by signing the treaties what could happen. They've been ungrateful for 40 years. So yes, it has to be seen as an example for others. Whether you're a member or not of the EU, you can leave. That's fine. You can leave. There's no obligation to stay, no obligation to remain. But you have to understand that it's a waste of our time if you suddenly decide to leave or you have specific conditions. So, of course, I was joking a lot about making it painful for nationalistic reasons. I am actually not at all in that uh, vein of thinking. I am all for building a joint European Union, but I have to admit also that the British people, at least the governments, have never tried to make it work. Never. Right? In fact, all the political parties except for the uh, the ones at the fringe of the political spectrum, were against leaving the EU. But it was completely, completely hypocritical because for the past 40 years, they've never really contributed to it. So let, let them learn a lesson. Uh, it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful for us too. But it has to be painful, more painful than necessary, maybe. But it has to serve as a lesson. So finally, history can change. That's it. We're done with today's debate. Any any final few words, Dirk, before we close this episode, this crazy episode? But that's not my fault. You chose that debate. No final words. I'm stunned. I'm no stunned, Sebastian. Of course. Of course you are. Thanks for listening and stay tuned. We have another episode, another crazy episode coming up very soon on todebate.net. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. these imprecisions that you have to deal with when you talk with me let's make that debate about the superheroes then then I'm on better footing (laughs) the reason why I went crazy is because (laughs) because I didn't have that many arguments that's part of of the reason why and (laughs) and I just thought okay for once it's okay you know You, you've asked to be you've asked to be crazy so I thought well you know for my- our listeners cannot see Sebastian here but uh, I'm now scared that he he might I, I never gonna leave our our hosting relationship now 
not sure what you he's going to do. You haven't heard my three minutes yet. Uh, when I will talk about what you talked about, making it making it more painful. I just did my introduction statement. Uh, now be warned, I have okay. more to come. Okay. And I'm sure they deserve it. Although I'm not sure if uh, coming from a French, uh, any <laughs> anything you have to say about the Brits carries a lot of weight. I have my arguments listed here. Okay, it says war. It says invasion. It says <laughs> Germany 1920s. Okay. <laughs> These are my arguments. We've never had this war. We've never managed to invade the UK. Now's the time. Yeah. Well, uh, they have one. They have one aircraft carrier. We shouldn't mess with them. Well, the French have one aircraft carrier too, of course. No, it's not working. Huh? It's not working. Which the French one or the British? It's not one? functional. I don't know either. <laughs> they always have problems. <laughs> That's why I'm in favor of a European army, joint one. Without the Brits, obviously. <laughs> was, there wasn't even an argument in there, right? It was just a, a three-minute rant just there. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting to real debate today. It looks like that. <laughs> it is a real debate. Here's What the are you talking about? You, you, you were, we are just demanding that we should have them suffer. You didn't tell me why. I said that in my introduction. My, that was just a rebuttal. Of, of what you said. <laughs> <laughs>